I am using my favorite stamp set, Lift Me Up by Stamping Up. I've used it so many times, but I love it. Who doesn't love hot air balloons? Thanks for joining me today on Tea Time with Taryn. And today I'm going to be doing um, a watercolor effect again. <laughs> um, so I'm starting off, I am lightly stamping my balloons onto my watercolor paper. And I say lightly, I'm I'm stamping off once. I want that impression to be barely visible. It's just going to be um, a guide for me. I'm also using the thinlet, the corresponding thinlet, so that I have that bigger balloon as well. And I'm just using a pencil and very lightly. You can barely see it even on the screen. I'm also going to hand write my sentiment. I thought about stamping it because I do have lots of um, stamps like this, but I've really got into this brush calligraphy look lately, so I think I'm going to stick with it. It'll go with the, the watercolor look that I'm doing today. I'm using water-based inks as my watercolors, and these are just um, stamping pad-free inkers. If you choose to use stamping pad re-inkers, make sure you use water base and not alcohol base. It's not going to work quite the same. And I'm using my aqua pen or water brush. They've got lots of different names, but this one is from Stamping Up, so I believe that's what they call it. And the colors I'm using are um, colors I mix myself, so they are not colors that you could purchase. I want to very like muted color. So I mixed blues and greens with browns to really give them um, a, a, just a very dull um, shade. So I'm going over everything. This one is the one that I um, traced with my uh, thin lit and I did wet the entire area to get started and that helps blend the colors together, but if you don't want that very blended look, the more water you squeeze out of the pen chamber, the lighter your color is going to be, and of course, um, the deeper you want your colors, the less water you would use. So I'm moving on now to these stamped versions, and as you can see, I used a, a very, very light gray, and I stamped off once before stamping on here, so you can hardly see my guides, but I'm making sure that I'm painting over the guides, unlike with pencil marks where I try to paint inside the guide so I can um, erase the pencil lines. In this case, I'm not going to be able to erase the pen, so or sorry, the ink, so I am making sure that I am painting over all of my guides that would have been the stamped area, stamped lines. And of course, moving on to the sentiment, you can see a little bit that I have my pencil guides there, so I drew it in to make sure to make sure I was happy with it before um, painting. I'm sticking with the colors that I use for the balloon, so everything I want everything to match, and of course, it'll help pull all the colors together. It's always a good idea to work slow when you are doing your lettering. It helps make everything consistent. The, the more you rush, the more you're going to make a mistake. So give yourself time uh, just to take your time while you're doing this. I used some scrap paper for this scrap watercolor paper and one of the edges is ripped and I really like that look. So what I'm doing is I'm gently running my cutter um, on the back, just making some guides for myself. I'm not cutting all the way through, but it's gonna cut maybe halfway through the paper. And then I'm gonna bend those pieces over and then I can rip the edges and it, it will be, um, I'll have this nice consistent look all the way around this card. So just bending it back and forth, I'm going to gently tear it, but this is this is something again you're going to want to take your time with because if you get too aggressive you're you're going to end up really tearing um, 
your tears will get away from the guides. So I have done that before. So the key is just to really take your time. And if you have nails, this works even better. If you don't, maybe give yourself some more of a, of a border for you to rip away. I'm, I'm able to work with this very thin border because I have nails that are helping me tear the edges. Once you have finished tearing all the edges, if that is what you choose to do, the next part is to erase all the pencil lines that I did, all the guides we made. So making sure, of course, that your ink is dry before you do this, just go ahead and lightly um, erase all the pencil lines you can see. If you get, go too hard, you are going to start to take some of the paper off, I found. You can actually erase some of the ink. Now, I did smudge the end of my true, so I'm actually using an ink eraser and erasing the ink smudges as well. I'm going to mount this onto a card, and this is going to be a greeting card, but I think that it would look nicer if I used another layer between it, just to help kind of ground those colors. So I'm using double-sided tape, and I'm going to um, now attach all of my layers. If you enjoyed um, watching me do watercoloring, I will be doing live videos every Wednesday. I'm calling them Watercolor Wednesdays, and that will be going live at 3 Eastern Standard Time. If you check on my uh, blog. I'll also have information there to uh, let you know with the links and everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got inspired. It was pretty simple and yet it is a really beautiful effective design. So I hope you got inspired. I hope you try this out. Feel free to tag me if you do on your Instagram posts and Feel free to leave comments. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.